thought we would take people of a different range of appearance, you know, from really not so beautiful to quite attractive, and different, different races and different ethnicities. And then we would announce the ethnicity, you know, Jewish, bang, we'd show them a picture. Black, show them a picture. Caucasian, bang, show them a picture. And the pictures would vary in attractiveness. But then what we were going to do is we are going to morph them with snakes and rats. So then you, because you can take a morphing program, right? And you could, I could make you like 10% snake or 10% rat. You've seen that in movies all the time. And so then the question would be, would you be more likely, A, to see an unattractive person as a rat or, or a snake? And B, would you be more likely to see a person who isn't a member of your ethnic and racial group as a rat or a snake? Aha, now that's interesting, because the thing to do with rats and snakes is get rid of them, right? And that's a problem. So, and then we thought we would also measure how orderly people were to see if that mediated the degree to which they were willing to perceive, it'd be, you know, implicit perception, fundamentally, whether this person was rat-like or snake-like. And we've got some other experience, experiments that are of the same sort devised. So I think that's a great experiment. I'm really curious. And then we'd have people rate them. It's like, um, how afraid are you of this person? How happy does this person make you? Um, you know, how, 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 how contemptuous are you of this person? How disgusted are you by this person? You know, a whole emotional response scale. And hopefully what we would find is the orderly people were more contemptuous and disgusted, but not more afraid by the morphed faces, and they would be more likely to categorize them as rat and snake-like, especially if they were from a different ethnic group or race. So it's a scary experiment, but it would allow us to distinguish between fear and, and, and con contempt. And then I was thinking, well, still, why the hell do you care Why is the disgusting so important? What the hell does it have to do with you? And then I was remembering, maybe, I don't know, maybe this game doesn't even exist anymore because the world has changed, but I bet it does. When I was a little kid, in like grade one, we used to play this game in school. And the game was, I think on The Simpsons they call it cooties. But we called it fleas, and so we'd play this at recess, and some person would have fleas, and then they would chase you around and they touched you and then you had fleas and everyone ran and went around from you and the game often starts sometimes it was just spontaneous but often the game could take a vicious twist and one of the lower status kids in the room would get you know accused of having fleas and that just wouldn't be wouldn't be just a game that'd be a source of taunting and exclusion so how many of you can remember games like that okay okay good good so that shows all this political correctness hasn't done a goddamn thing to how children behave you know, and actually that's a relief to me. So, okay. So then you think, what the hell's going on there? And the first thing that's going out is that the kids are playing out the idea of contamination. Right? So let's say you're contemptible and disgusting, you know. So maybe you, you have syphilis because you're a, what do you call? You're a, you're a, you're, you're dissolute and debauched and, you know, it's gone to the final stage and it's just horrific. So anybody who's going to look at you is going to have a reaction like this. They're, you know, they're going to want to look away. Okay, so then I was thinking, what happens if you touch someone like that? No, no, no. Think about it now. Think about it for a minute. Well, first of all, in a place where there's lots of infectious diseases, what happens is then you die. So that's not a good thing, you know. Or if you're near anything corrupt, like, like a, a carcass that has been rotting, you don't get to eat it because then you die. Like, you've got to be sensitive to disgust. Because otherwise you'll run into contamination, and the contamination will kill you. The question is, how contagious is contamination? And I think that's the issue. So now, you put yourself in this position. So, you're on a dating site, and you find someone, and this might even be more powerful initially for women than for men. Because I don't know if you know this, but women rank 85% of men as below average in attractiveness. Now, men get their revenge, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to make a case that, you know, women are more demented when it comes to men than men are when it comes to women. It's just they're demented in different ways. So, so then you think, 
it's interesting because I've watched my daughter go through Tinder. You know, it's sort of painful. It's like, nope, 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 nope. And you know, she's she's kind of she kind of thinks it's funny, and it, I suppose it is, but it's cruel as hell, right? If all these poor Weasley guys, they're just getting sorted into the you should not be in the damn mating pool pile. Right, right, and that's a fundamental judgment. You should not be in the mating pool. Like if you're off on a genocidal spree, that's exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to prevent that. So, you know, I'm not saying my daughter's got genocidal tendencies. <laughs> Although she probably does, because she is human, by the way. So, all right. So now, let's say that you've categorized some person in there as, you know, you're not going to respond to their damn email. And, you know, you've put them down as a one out of ten. You know, so, hmm, no, no. And then someone says, you have to go out with that person. You have to act, ask that person out. And then you think, well, how, how are you going to react to that, that idea? Well, the first thing is, I think you're going to be angry at the person who's going to force you to do that. It's going to be anger. And then the second thing is, how are you going to feel when you bring that person into public with you, around your friends? Okay? How are you going to feel? And the answer to that is, you're going to feel disgusted and ashamed. And the reason for that is because it's, it's, it's contaminating, it's catching. And so then that puts the damn theories together, and this is why. If I force you to go out with someone that's low status, and we'll say low attractiveness, we'll put the whole package together. Low attractiveness, low socioeconomic status, no real hope for the future, and really unlikable. We can put all those sorts of things together, and you're going to think, no way. And then you bring that person out on a date with all your friends. And they think, what the hell is up with you? And so maybe you're an eight, roughly speaking, and then you get to go visit five land for a while. <laughs> okay, now, what happens to you? Now, this is where it gets tricky. So, we know that you, like the lobster, have a counter way down in the bottom of your brain that's really, really old. It's precognitive, it's even pre-emotional. It's way down there at like reticular activating level. And what it does is scan the world to figure out where you are in the hierarchy. And it actually matters because if you're low, then you die, or you're stressed, or your children die, you know, and you, you're, everything's worrisome to you because you're barely clinging on to the edge of existence and you only take impulsive pleasures because that's the longest span that you can count on having pleasures over and it's rough at the bottom and you get low status mates if you get any at all and it's not good so you actually do not want to be there and there's a reason for that whereas at the top it's like, yes, you know, you get preferential access to everything, everything 